and get my screen shared for the agenda. Could have done that before I started the, the recording, I suppose, but whatever. Okay, uh, welcome everyone. This is the Aries Cloud Agent Python user group meeting on April 16th. Um, usual reminders, this is a Linux Foundation call, so the antitrust policy is in effect. Uh, and this is also a Hyperledger meeting. Um, so please abide by the Hyperledger code of conduct. Um, this week is a bit of an odd week for the Acapug meeting. Uh, IIW is currently happening right now. Um, so a number of our, our usual attendees are, are there this week, uh, including Stephen, who usually hosts this call. So he's asked me to, to step in and host for today. Um, we were originally planning to not hold this meeting at all, given the fact that uh, people were off at IAW, but there were a few things that came up, um, especially for a, a, a potential new release of ACPI 0.12.1. Uh, so we are, are holding this one to discuss, see what else needs to go in, uh, what shouldn't go in before that merge, how we should manage that. Um, so that's our, our main topic for today. Um, I recognize everybody on the call. So I'll skip anybody wanting to do an introduction. Um, does anybody have anything, any announcements or anything to bring up before we move on to the agenda? Okay, cool. Uh, so what's happened uh, um, since the 0.12.0 release. Um, so there's been a few PRs that have been submitted and merged. Uh, the critical one that's encouraging the um, 0 0.12.1 release is uh, this one here. Uh, there was an issue in the handling of the new feature of using a did peer two or four as the uh, primary service for an out-of-band invitation, which was resulting in a multiple record uh, located for invitation key error. Um, basically, you couldn't use an invitation with the same did, did peer two or four more than one time, uh, which kind of breaks the whole feature altogether, uh, since the idea was to enable connection reuse through using the same did for each invitation. Um, so that feature is, is essentially broken. Um, so I, I submitted a fix for that one, uh, and that's been merged. Um, there's been a few other PRs that have been merged since the 0.12.0 release, uh, fixing auto endorsement. Uh, it would go through the endorsement process, but then fail on the acknowledgement if you have the auto endorse flag enabled. Um, so Jamie took care of that one. Um, there's a 500 error when re-promoting did with endorsement. I'm not familiar with this one. It was just a small thing. I just noticed if you try to make a did public after it's already been posted on the ledger, it just, nothing broke, but it returned a 500 error. Okay. Okay. So... Good bug fix, it sounds like. Uh, version bump, um, some documentation updates, a minor integration test fix. Um, and then this one that I merged this morning is uh, just doing some open API spec changes. Um, I don't think this has any significant impact on the actual function. Most of these are just the updated Swagger and open API JSON files. Um, so yeah, this this won't actually affect the operation. Just a better model definition for the open API generation. Okay, so this is a, a critical bug that I, I think will, uh, again, as we already mentioned, necessitates having a new release. There's another one that was reported by Sheldon in uh, Discord just earlier today. It might have been yesterday. Um, in the handling of out-of-band invitations with attached uh, credential offers. So there's that. There was something came up yesterday. I don't really understand it, but Ian's here 
maybe he could talk about it. Came up on our chat. Yeah. Hey, good morning. Sorry, I just joined. Um, what's the topic? Um, 0.12.1 release and bug fixes anything else that should make it into that release before right, it goes okay. out. Okay, and the question is? is the there... question is, there was there was an issue that uh, Jamie mentioned, but didn't have the details on and said you might. <laughs> okay, which was, was that the one you had just had up? It might be related. I just, yesterday morning, there was chat about something not breaking between Faber and Alice with. Oh, with the connection reuse, that one? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so that was, um, uh, I don't know if that's a new issue or if it's something we need to fix for 12. One, it's, uh, try. so Stephen asked me to see if I could get connection reuse working between Akapai and the BC wallet. Um, and the Faber wasn't able to connect using out of band because out of band was using did exchange, which wasn't supported yet by BC wallet. So I switched Faber to use the connection 1.0 with, with did with out of band. And it, I was able to connect to BC wallet. Um, that was uh, the same way Keith, uh, Keith was doing it with another app, uh, but then the connection reuse wasn't working. So I've been looking into it a little bit. I don't know exactly why the, the there's an issue. Um, the connection reuse wasn't working between Alice and Faber either with using the out of band with connection 1.0. So I'm not exactly sure why, um, or if it, with Akapai, it could be an Akapai issue or it could be an issue with the, the Alice Faber demo or it might just not work. Um, and it looks like it's not working with uh, Credo. So. Okay, uh, interesting. I don't think it, it's not gonna be a 12.1 fix because I don't know how long it's going to take us to figure it out and fix it. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Uh, I have a test environment that I've been using for um, a lot of the Credo Akapa interop stuff. I, I might, I, I don't know that I have a good setup to get Credo to, to do the attempted connection reuse, but I could validate the connection reuse between Ak Akapai two Akapa instances pretty yeah so connect connection reuse works with did exchange it just when i tested it with a with out of band and connection 1.0 then it wasn't working okay interesting so, but i i had to make a change to favor demo to do that and that's not um i haven't pr'd that yet okay gotcha so that's that's not in the Akapai repo okay okay um so it sounds like uh, so the current set of uh, I lost my there we are the current set of PRs um, are pretty good I don't think there's anything that uh, would require a minor version change these are all just patchworthy changes um, I think the only other item that I would want to investigate a little bit further is the issue reported by Sheldon earlier today. Um, uh, I need to spend some time looking into that because I think that probably was a bug that I introduced for 0.12.0 uh, based on just the, the error report. I think it's in the area of things that I touched. So that seems like something we should probably try to fix at least. Um, so I'll spend some time with that today um, and I can get an issue created. And if it seems like it's a bigger issue than can be solved for a patch release, um, I'll, I'll make some noise on that and we can decide at that point whether we should move forward with forward with 0.12.1 without that fix. Um, but yeah, okay. Uh, is there anything else anyone is aware of that should go into a patch release? I don't think so. I think everything should target after 12. Yeah, point yeah that's, that's what I was just about to voice as well as I, I think most of these are probably a, a post patch release set of changes.
Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, so there's a couple of ways we could handle the, the patch release. Um, we could create a branch from the 0, 12, 0, or really from the current state of main, given the, the PRs here that it, they're all patch worthy, I would say. Uh, we could branch from here and then um, release from that branch. Um, and that would enable other PRs to move forward. Um, if we're not really in a hurry to merge these PRs, then I'd say we can just go ahead and use main as the release branch for 0 0.12.1. Um, so I guess that's an open question. Is there any of those PRs that we'd really like to see get merged sooner than later, or, or can they wait a little bit longer for a patch release? I have two open and I, they're not, I don't care if they get merged anytime soon. Uh, okay. They're both the non cred stuff. Yeah. Those should be relatively self contained. So, us releasing a patch release isn't going to cause painful merge conflicts or anything if they no. stay open for a little bit longer. Okay. And then cool. there's the decorators one that's been sitting for a bit. Um, and then Emiliano is the one working on it, and he's at I the think, conference all week. Yeah, I think that's a big change too. So, it yeah, I think it's, there's like deep. a lot of files. Right. Yeah. I don't think we want to. Yeah, there's more files. One. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think that one could probably be the in a one point release. Yeah. Or sorry, post twelve. Right. Yep. I think we can do it off main unless anybody else doesn't want to do that. But I mean, is there anything is there anything um any reason why we can't do this or what Daniel's suggesting, which is like do a release off of a branch and then merge that back? No, I don't think there's anything that would prevent us from doing that. Just, uh, I mean, it would prevent issues, right? No, it just means we can't, we shouldn't merge in tickets that we don't want to to main if we're going to tag off main. Yeah. So if there's nothing that we need to merge in the next bit until we get that, oh, fixed, okay. then we can just merge to main. Or like we can just can tag off main. Yeah, I think that's fine. I think if we're not planning on actually merging any of those things, so yeah. Okay, cool. That's my opinion, but I don't care. Yeah, that's fine by me as well. I would say. Um, okay, I think the final question I have is uh, the thoughts on the timing of of a patch release. Um, Stephen is normally the one that that does the actual putting together of a release. Um, there's nothing sacred about that process, I don't think. Um, he's got the instructions all laid out, so any maintainer could pick it up and, and work through that process and prepare a release. Um, I think I'm personally of the opinion to to let Stephen continue owning that process of, of managing the releases. I think it provides a nice separation between me as uh, primarily working on the code developing and letting him worry about the, uh, the administrative bits of, of the release. Um, I, I think that would mean that we'd be looking at uh, a 0 12 one release at the earliest this Friday, so after IAW, and um, it seems more likely to be beginning of next week. Um, does anybody have any opinions on, on when we should get this release out? No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think the default is we'll just wait for Steven to do it. Okay, cool. Um, I think that about covers the topics that we had lined up for this meeting today. Does anybody have anything else that they'd like to raise?
Um, for the like the test environment that you're using and the issues that we've been seeing uh, with the the connections reuse and all that, should shouldn't that not be picked up by AATH tests? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure if what the current state of AATH testing is with Credo. Um, I know at least for a period of time there was a gap between uh, the version that AATH could spin up of Credo slash AFJ um, and what the current version was. Um, and, and I think that was preventing some testing uh, between Akapai. Uh, so the, the test environment that I put together where I was hitting interop issues, I, I actually went and just hacked something together real fast with the most recent version of Credo. Uh, it's not really something that's suitable for merging back into Aries Agent Test Harness at this point, unfortunately, but uh, it was able to enable me to do the interop testing. But it, it certainly does seem like something that should be included in the test harness. Um, I'm just not sure if it's currently possible or not with the level of support for uh, Credo in there right now. Yeah, and I've also, I'm under the impression that AATH is a bit of a uh, learning curve itself. So it's really hard to contribute to that yeah. right now. It's definitely lagging behind with features that are being tested. But um, I think we do need to look a little bit into why this latest issue wasn't caught by any testing. Um, I don't understand this part of what's going on well enough, but feels like something that probably should have been caught by automated testing. But yeah. Yeah. So that's something just to think about going forward. Um, yeah. But yeah, sure. ATH in general, I don't know how we're going to work on it and improve it because it's, I think Ian understands it a bit, but it's mostly just, Sheldon's project and it's definitely lagging behind in features that are getting tested that way. Yeah, the main the main goal for AATH was to test interoperability against the RFCs. So there's some stuff that's going to be tested in AATH and some stuff that isn't. Um, whereas the Akapai integration testing is, is more supposed to be focused around Akapai specific stuff. So depending on if this is an RFC related thing or an Akapai specific thing, then we can look at one or the other to see how it should be included. But AATH is like, it is specifically supposed to be focused on interoperability. Yes, it's maybe it'd be good at some point to see which ones, it, which RFCs are being covered currently and which ones aren't and if we should make an effort there or not. Yeah, but RFC testing is kind of tricky as well because I think there's, there's a fair amount of like details that kind of influence the, the interop as well beyond just strict adherence to like what the text of the RFC says, for instance. Um, out of band uh, as an RFC says that you can use either dids or an inline service block in the out of band invitation to establish the connection. Um, but it, it relies on if you're going to use a did, for instance, and with the recent capabilities added to Akapai with did peer two and four being used as the did in, in the out of band invitation, that depends on both ends of the exchange supporting did peer two and four to peer two slash four and not necessarily both at the same time, I suppose. Um, so like those those details influence the RFC and prop, um, even though it's within spec of the RFC to, to do either one, um, it, it can cause like a false negative, I guess. Yeah, so there's there's a, an a AATH, uh, an AATH run that runs with just Akapai. So it runs Akapai to Akapai. So we can do like if we implement a feature in Akapai, then we can 
we could implement it in AATH and then include it in the, the run set for the Akapai Akapai. And then there's a separate run set for Akapai, you know, Credo, which I'm not sure if the Credo side, how up to date that is, but, you know, then we can include it in the, in the other run sets, depending on what the other, uh, the other agents support, but there is an Akapai Akapai run. So even if it's, even if Akapai is the only one who has the, who's implemented that feature, then we can still include it in AATH and still include it in the run set. It's just that it's never, it's never usually uh, part of our scope or something that people are usually thinking about. Yeah, it's almost like a bit of an afterthought, but um, I wanted to ask, I, it's been a while since I've looked at the the results, but like, do we test uh, like different versions against each other or is it just like the latest against the latest kind of thing? I think it's just the latest. There's two, um, there's two, mm, there's two tag, there's two tags. There's two ways you can build the AATH or the, the Akbai back channel in AATH. You can build it against the latest code in master or main, sorry, the main branch, or you can build it from the latest release. So there's, so you can't test like it, it, it doesn't go, you know, version X to version Y or anything like that. There's only the, the two that are supported right now. I mean, you can manu you can manually go in check out the repo and change it to do whatever you want, but, and it, but I think the run sets just run against the, the latest master branch. I don't, I don't think they run against the latest release. I think it's just master main sorry right i mean i anticipate that this would be a big effort to try and accommodate that if different version testing because you could argue that maybe afj or credo 4 has different features from credo 5 and maybe 5 has a support that 4 lacks the support and same thing with akapai and whatnot so yeah the, i think the question back in the day was like how much how much do we actually want to be able to go back and test versions against each other? And, you know, the, the AATH has been around for, I can't, I don't know, like two or three years now. And, you know, back when it was written, everything was developing fairly quickly. And, you know, everyone was pretty much just staying up, up to date on the latest, the latest version of everything. So there was, at the time, there wasn't really any requirement to test specific release versions against each other. I think AATH is a little bit older than two or three years old, actually. I think it goes three or four at least. Um, but yeah. The years the years recently have just been blending into each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is kind of just a meta comment. Uh, I don't know that I have solutions to offer for it, but I, I've been noticing, feeling a, a, a gap between um, or not between anything in particular, just somewhere in our testing strategy. Our, our unit tests with an ACPI, I feel like are a little like too specific, too narrow. So as soon as we make a change, everything breaks and we have to go and touch all the tests and, and update all the mocks and stuff in order to make sure that the mocks are pointing to roughly the right thing. Uh, so I, so that, that's one aspect of it. It's just kind of a bummer that the unit tests are as brutal as they are. Um, and then the integration tests um, are really helpful because they catch a lot more than the unit tests will usually because the unit tests just break on everything. Um, but the integration tests actually test the functionality, but I think there's still gaps in what we're testing, um, what we're covering by the integration tests. And then there's a challenge, the whole challenge of the integration tests take forever to run. Um, so adding more coverage, adding more scenarios to the integration tests um, just increases the amount of time that we need to get good turnaround on uh, verifying that things are working as expected or not. Yeah, I think probably what we need is a more formal strategy around testing releases. Um, and, you know, just, uh, I was just looking at the AATH results and it looks like even the ACPI, ACPI test run, there's failures right now there's yeah. there's a whole bunch of things that are failing um but with the integration tests um there's a lot of duplication between the tests because you know a lot of them will test 
you know, issuing a credential and then revoking it and doing a proof request and blah, 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 different variations of that scenario. Um, and then they'll test it with, you know, at, starting at back by with different, different flags, like with multi-tenancy and single tenancy and, and so forth. So I think we could narrow down, there's a tag for the, the, the integration tests that run as part of GitHub Actions. So we could look at that and maybe narrow that down so that as part of a regular pull request, we don't know, we, you know, we can narrow down the, the, the volume of integration tests that we run with a pull request, but then as part of a release, we would have to have, you know, a step that said, okay, well, if we're coming up to a release, someone needs to go in and make sure that the, the full set of integ integration tests is run. And, you know, it does a little bit more detailed testing. Because I think, you know, we do these, it, this happens quite a lot where we do a release and, you know, we put out a bunch of release candidates and then you yeah. know, by the time we get to a release, there's still, there's still a bug that comes up fairly quickly. So I think, you know, a formal kind of test plan around doing releases it would probably be a good idea. Yeah. Uh, agreed. Um... Maybe it might be worthwhile to have a sort of issue that encompasses, yeah, like you said, to have a formal test plan and maybe start think, documenting things that we need to to fix. Yeah. <laughs> With all the other stuff that is going on. But it might just be good to put like down what some of the pain points are and then look at ways we can probably try to fix that as we go along or as we start changing things. Do you think, Akif, just like a generic ticket that says these are the some of the issues with testing and then? Yeah, it could even be even a discussion or something if that is easier or better than an issue. I don't know. It's just. I'm sure there's a lot of people that have their own observations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and the people here that have far more experience working in Akapai and even across the different frameworks than I do, and they have probably some good insight. So yeah, I think opening an issue and um, starting a discussion. I've never used discussions on GitHub before, really. And neither is Akpai, apparently. Um, yeah, I, I think we can start the, the conversation on an issue. And then um, if that becomes a more appropriately structured as a, as a discussion, I guess we can, I think you can turn an issue into a discussion. So I, I think that's possible in the future if we need it. Um, I can volunteer myself to open that issue um, and tag some people to kind of gather some of the same conversation that happened on this call. Um, would that be helpful? Um, it's the right way to capture that discussion? I think it's a, a good way to get started. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll feel, do that. Feel free to tag me in, in that too. I'd, I'm happy to follow that along, follow along with that. Okay, will do. Cool. Uh, anything else for this meeting today? Not for me. All right. I think we can go ahead and call it here for today then. Um, Thanks everyone. Thanks for uh, your participation, the discussion. It was uh, really helpful. Um, I'll open up those issues. I'll get people tagged. Um, and I've got a few things to look into from Sheldon as well for some bug fixes. Uh, and we'll keep you all posted. Thanks everyone. We'll see you next time. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Bye.